Good day, Church Fellowship, and welcome to the LJCC update for Wednesday, December the 8th. We're a little late today. Thanks for watching. Hope you're staying warm and dry. If you're not warm, in reality, just wait a couple of days. Sounds like it's going to be 80 degrees and humid again before the end of the week. So we're in Texas. What do you, what do you think? Thanks very much for all your kind comments uh, on Sunday's sermon. Spoke to several people who saw it both online and in person, and I just really appreciate the support in that process. I hope you're finding uh, the women in your life of ministry and really affirming to them how worthy they are to be that, that partner with you in the ministry of the gospel. And so uh, it was a blessing. In reality, y'all have been really supportive throughout the, the two segments of our Roman study, celebrating God's good news and living God's good news, both last spring and this fall. And I appreciate that an awful, awful lot. There are, of course, always, if you want to go back and rewatch one or re-see one, they're always available on the website at church. You can access them there or through our YouTube channel as well. A couple of reminders we, uh, that I want to hit today. First of all, we mentioned it last week, our men's ministry big kind of first kickoff really as far as a large scale event is the football fellowship coming up this sun Saturday, the 11th, uh, which includes a make your own pizza opportunity. Ron White supplying the ingredients. We get to put them together. He'll make sure they're cooked just right. It can't really go much better than that. Uh, there's an email. It starts at 2:30 in the afternoon. It starts. There's an email that's been sent to everyone. I would really ask for you to reply to it. Even by the way, if it's a reply that you can't be there that day, please encourage those guys through responding to that email. Really, really thankful. Uh, did we'd like for you to sign up, but um, ultimately, if you don't find the email and don't reply, we still want you to come, no matter what. I think everybody's being asked to bring a dessert or cookie kind of thing and also some uh, soft drinks to drink, so or water, whatever you'd like to bring, iced tea, uh, share with every, to share with everybody. Really am thankful for David Gay's leadership in this and again the core team that he's gathered around him as this ministry gets started. Please remember that our Arms of Hope gift card uh, drive is, is due, the, those cards are due this Sunday. Uh, pretty simple process. You pick up one of the cards that you find out here in the foyer. Uh, you want to take the gift card that you get and paper clip it to the star. There's actually a little bit of information that they're asking you to fill out on the back of the card. Please do that for them. They appreciate it very much. If you don't do it, they may be calling us to try and fill it in for them. So help us out with that. And then simply just place it in the box, giving back to the Lord. A pretty simple process, and it makes a huge amount of difference in the lives of those uh, children and young people that are in the care of Arms of Hope, both at the Medina campus and the Bowles campus as well. The next few updates are going to really try to emphasize the changes to our normal uh, church schedule as we head into these Christmas calendar specials. And so I want to do that real quick as well before we get to our prayer list. Next Wednesday, in reality, a week from today, is when things really start changing pretty dramatic, dramatically. Next Wednesday is our what we're calling, what we have called for years now, Caroling the Saints. We'll be assembling here at the building at 5:30. We'll be sending you out in groups uh, to to sing at uh, three nursing homes that we know of at this point, but also some of our members who uh, are shut in or in need of a special touch at this time of year. So we have asked for you to sign up. The sign up sheet is just right over here on the window. And uh, my push on Sunday didn't uh, yield any names. Uh, in reality, if we don't have anyone sign up or whatever numbers that we have sign up, that dictates how many places we can go. And if no one signs up, and then just decide to show up, we'll have a real short list and a whole lot of people going to very few homes. You wouldn't want that to happen, I'm fairly certain. So please pray about coming in and being a part of that. Um, we will make sure that it, it is safe for you to participate in and then uh, be a part of it. Give us a sign up and be here next Wednesday about 530. You are really going to be a blessing to many people, but as you know, any time that we work to be uh, sacrificially a blessing for others, the blessing comes back to us as well. This Sunday, December the 12th, is normal, Bible classes, services, everything like that. 
The Christmas party, I want to point you towards the sign-up sheet is right over here in the Welcome Center as well. Uh, it comes up on Monday, December the 20th. Just kind of mark that on your calendars as well. You can always check the front page of the Caring and Sharing, whether you have the physical copy or you download it off the website. Take a look at it. Uh, we're going to have a holiday specials, Christmas specials coming up, things that are coming up in the next couple of weeks that will kind of indicate to you where something is new or different or special that's coming up in the calendar. So that's going to be a great place to look as well. We have a, a, our, our prayer list grew pretty significantly since last week, and so a number of things I'm going to mention. I'm going to push through them fairly quickly, but I, I want to mention these as we start praying. Last week we mentioned Amanda Valise had developed an ulcer on her cornea. We have great news that the ulcer has actually already healed because probably because of some of the things she was doing to rest it, but also some drops that she was given last week. She's going to continue using the drops, but you know the big news is no surgery to, to repair anything, and we're really, really thankful for that. Edna Allen, Jamie Gay's aunt, we mentioned last week, was facing knee surgery. That surgery went very well on Monday. Rehab is going to be a long process for her, and we really need to pray for that process. She's up in UTMB Angleton and would appreciate your prayers and maybe even a note or dropping by for a quick visit. Also, Joe Bryant, Shelly Bryant, our missionary who's in Singapore, her mother is recovering from her successful hysterectomy, and they also harvested some lymph nodes just to continue to be careful about the cancer that they found, the uterine cancer that she's fighting. Uh, she is home, and we're really thankful that she seems to be doing well. Also, we got word that Trinity German has gotten a clean report from her MRI last week. Remember, she had a, a seizure a couple of weeks ago. There is still going to be an EEG that they've scheduled for later this week, uh, but at this point, things look very positive for her. Also, we mentioned Ty Lewis, the Patterson's grandson, who had an uh, accident on a skateboard all the way over in California. Uh, pretty banged up, but is doing much, much better, and we're really thankful for that. He is still looking at a surgery coming up on, to repair some things on his shoulder, but they're wanting him to be healed up a little more before they address that. But we're thankful that he's doing so much better. As we turn to those that we need to lift up in our prayers, uh, Randy Moore has been struggling, and some of you are aware of this, with pulmonary issues for the last few weeks and uh, in reality had to be hospitalized over the weekend. Uh, he was released on Monday with a very clear diagnosis that although the symptoms have been severe, uh, in reality it is just severe seasonal allergy and complications for that. We're really thankful for that diagnosis and we pray that he can recover as quickly as possible. Mary Bob Henderling came forward a couple of Sundays ago and asked for our prayers for her, seeking our continued help to be the disciple of Christ that she wants to be. Um, we want to respect that and pray for her, all of us, in our individual prayers. But also she wants us to know that she's going to be moving to a new apartment. Uh, she's been over on uh, Garland Drive and is going to be moving to the uh, what's now called the Lake Jackson Landing. Many of us have called it the Jackson Parkway for a long time. Uh, but uh, basically right in front of the main Dow building there. It's a great place to be. Uh, we've had several members be there. James Smith is there at this time. She's going to be moving, uh, I believe, in the middle of next week. 15th is the date that's specified. If you'd like to help with that move, it shouldn't be a whole lot of stuff, but it goes faster with more people. Please contact Mike Patterson if you'd like to know how you could help with that. Also, Ralph Nocken, uh, after spending nearly three weeks at uh, St. Luke's up in the medical center, was able to come home last Thursday. Really thankful for that. I know that Orlean and uh, Sherry are glad to have him home. But he continues to recover and is uh, still under uh, doctor's care as he recovers from the blood clots that were found. I'm asking for some prayers for my cousin, Anthony Tolliver, uh, who is hospitalized in Clear Lake because of some compute, acute complications from uh, long-term diabetes that he's been struggling with for a while. Anthony Toller, I would appreciate your prayers for him. Cheryl Sanchez, who's a friend of Beth Pan's, uh, is anticipating, a lifelong friend of Beth Pan's, is anticipating some surgery for some abdominal obstruction that's going on, but she's uh, been on blood thinners for a very long time and is needing to get a good report on her blood tests, and so we need to be praying for her as the next few days unfold. A couple of notes we got from Peter Hunt, his father, John Hunt, 
has been battling dementia for a long time now, even before Peter left. Uh, recently, he's had some more physical complications from, from the dementia issues and uh, has been hospitalized, and, and Peter's asked for us to be praying for her, his dad, John. Also, on a much more upbeat note, JJ and Arena, Peter's brother and, and uh, sister-in-law, had a new baby boy uh, within the last week or so. His name is George, and he came in at eight pounds, and everything that's been reported is he and mom are both healthy. Beth's sister, Beth Pan's sister, Georgia Sherry, is having surgery tomorrow, and she would appreciate our prayers on that. Sylvia Haro let us know that her daughter-in-law, Jennifer, is needing our prayers as, as she is struggling with some things right now. Joe McShann called and asked us to pray for Galen Davis, which is a cousin of his, who was in a severe car accident in Lufkin and had to be life flighted all the way to Houston. She has skull fractures when she got here. And last we heard, which was Monday, she was still uh, unresponsive. So we need to be praying for Galen Davis. Nancy Estello, who is Maria Vargas's daughter, We've been praying for Maria for years now as she struggles with her cancer. Uh, she was in an accident last Thursday morning and was, was able to be sent home the next day with a broken wrist on Friday. Uh, we're really thankful it was that minimal, but let's continue to remember Nancy Estello in our prayers. Ernie Smith, many of you may have met him a few years ago. This is Kim Raber's father. He's also Pat Montana's husband. Uh, is struggling with various health issues. He and Pat have recently moved back to the area to be near family, to be near Kim in reality. And so we want, but they've asked for, uh, Pat called and asked for us to pray for Ernie and put him on our prayer list, and we want to respect that. I want to continue to pray for those battling cancer, including those we've already mentioned, but Naomi Crumrine, Vicki Johnson, Nina Voigt, Rick King, LaVonda Potts, Chepo San Miguel, Ben Lascano, Danny Bice, D. Rambo, and Maria Vargas. Our December mission emphasis, as I'm sure you're aware, is our children's homes that we support, Arms of Hope, Cherokee, and Sunny Glen. We want to not forget to continue to pray for those in Haiti, particularly our efforts with the Hope for Haiti's children, as things there are not getting better. Rhonda Pierce, particularly, which is Craig's sister, uh, and her husband, Frandy, um, need to keep them in our prayers as, as we still have not heard that they've found a way to get to safer territory. As we close out today, let's mention some birthdays. Friday, December the 10th, Ron McDaniel celebrating his birthday. Give him a call, send a card, uh, maybe even run by. J.D. Shirts, although I'm sure finishing up his exams, great time to have a birthday in the middle of exams. So happy birthday, J.D. Hope you get home from SFA safely. That'll be Saturday, December the 11th. This Sunday, December the 12th, Bailey Peltier is celebrating her birthday. Beverly Anderson is celebrating a birthday on Monday the 13th. And next Tuesday the 14th, uh, Lisa Hunt is celebrating a birthday. Let's be sure and send some texts and cards her direction as well. Before I finish today, I just wanted to mention a special concern. Many of you have read the reports in the newspaper about Cole Hagen, a student at Bewood who was assaulted over the weekend. He is still in ICU at the Houston Medical Center, but we've gotten reports that he's waking up from his coma, which we're thankful for. Still has a long ways to go before he's healed. We need to be praying, um, and, and our hearts need to be breaking how uh, the sin of all of us impacts everyone, but especially our children. And the way our anger and our hatred can, although we may see it as small, can uh, rub off on others around us. And uh, in reality, we need to be praying for our community. We need to be praying for BISD as they have to deal with these things, and Bewood High School in particular as this crime continues to be investigated. And above all, let's pray for Cole as he recovers. So as we close out tonight, I would invite you to pray with me. Our Father and our God, we're really thankful for these people, the birthdays that we've mentioned, the that, that we've had an opportunity to celebrate, and uh, we'll have an opportunity to celebrate. Thank you for the blessing, your blessing, that they are in our lives. We want to give you thanks for Amanda Valise's good report and that that eye has already begun healing. May it continue to become whole and that it 
doesn't keep her from doing uh, any of the things that she wants to do, particularly in her role as a wife and mother. Father, we lift up Edna Allen to you. We thank you for the success of the surgery and that she was able to get through it, but we, we hold her and put her in your hands for the effectiveness of her physical therapy and rehab. Father, we're thankful that Joe Bryant got through her surgery, and we pray that the results, these final results that will come back from uh, the lymph nodes and so on, that, that those will continue to be positive and that she can recover and be back on her feet soon. Father, we want to celebrate JJ and Irina's baby George. We're thankful that he's here safely, and we uh, lift all of them up to you as their family continues to grow. Father, we want to pray for our, our brother, uh, Randy Moore, and pray that he can recover fully and that, that he can put these allergy symptoms behind him. We want to pray for Ralph Nocken. Thankful that he's home, but again, still a lot a long way to go. Uh, pray for Orlean and Sherry as they care for him. We lift up Mary Bob Henderling, and, and we, we appreciate her tender heart to, to say, I need your help to be who God wants me to be. And we pray for her in this transition from one apartment to another. Father, we lift up Wanda Long and Ashley Mullins' twins, Bella and Toby. We lift up Lindley Gover and Ronnie Mullins and Lisbeth Warnke and Clyde Janice Stewart. We lift up Kathy Lee Davis and Joanne Taylor. We want to lift up Cindy Yates and Tiffany Baker and Shirley Kimmerling, Zane Lee. We lift up Nell Brown and Ron and Nora McDaniel, Robin Loftus, Janine Phillips, Paula Roper, Charlie and Candy Crest. Sandra Mullins, and Meg Scott, Nicole Swanson, Dee Rambo, Joanne Roots, April Barton, Barbara Greenway, Jim and Judy Carl. Father, I, I want to hold Anthony up to you, and I want to pray for your blessings in his life, that, that healing can come to his body that he needs, and uh, some, that he can be stronger and uh, be able to get back to some routines of normalness. Father, we lift up Cheryl, Cheryl Sanchez and ask for your blessings in her life. We lift up John Hunt and, and the family that surrounds him there in Bristol. Father, we lift up Galen Davis and we pray uh, that, that she will be able to get the care she needs and that she'll be able to recover as soon as possible. We lift up Jennifer Jimenez in her struggles and pray that, uh, that Sylvia can be the support that she needs to be and that you'll surround her with people that will support her as well. Father, we lift up George Cherry and, and pray for her surgery coming up, Nancy Estello and Ernie Smith. Father, we lift up Mary Cronk. Again, so thankful that she's home and recovering from COVID at home now. We lift up Rhonda and Brandy Pierce. We lift up Trinity German and Ty Lewis, little Naomi Crumrine, Nina Voigt, Vicki Johnson, Jeffrey Fuller, Rick King, Ponchito Jimenez, Jose San Miguel, Lavonda Potts, Iola Moore, Dave Newberry, Vicki Kamlowski, Ben Lascano, Maria Vargas, Danny Bice, Carolyn Hunter, and of course, little Allie Wade. Father, we want to continue to lift up our, our teachers and again, the, the ways that they're working so hard to educate our kids who are, are still catching up from the things that went on with COVID. We lift up our health care workers and particularly as things can continue to evolve with what the COVID pandemic. We lift up our police, fire, EMS, and our military. Father, we want to lift up our arms of hope, Sunny Glen and Cherokee Children's Home. We pray your blessings on them. Um, in very special ways. Father, pray for hope for Haiti's children. Pray for those in Afghanistan. Father, I want to hold up President Biden and Governor Abbott and ask for you to reveal your wisdom to them and point them in the right directions to be about your justice and not just those things that they see as human wisdom. Father, we, uh, I want to particularly mention at this time our, our U.S. Supreme Court and pray for um, those men and women and the important decisions that they're going to be making this spring and into next summer. Father, we lift all these things up to you. Thankful for them. Thankful for uh, the way that you give us an opportunity to pray for them and also to work in their lives. Pray that you would guide us how we can be your help in all these lives. We pray all this in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen and Amen. As always, I want to remind you to check our website, visit the Facebook page, and download the Wednesday announcements, which is probably already on the website 
and Sundays caring and sharing for more details on prayer requests and anything else that you're looking for as far as information. We have another great Sunday coming up this week. Hope you'll be there uh, to be part of it. As always, I want to thank you for watching this evening. I pray that you continue to stay well and that you are continually reminded of all the ways that God blesses us. And particularly at this time of the year, let us be thankful that we have, that you sent your son, not as some sort of royal, majestic king, but instead in a manger surrounded by shepherds, loved and loving. Really thankful for you. Have a good evening. Bye.